Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. This is day four of my New York sketch trip. So my first stop of today is the uh, New York Public Library. So I just love these two guarding lions. So their names are Fortitude and Patience. And by the way, my horoscope sign is a Leo. And um, okay, so now I'm just starting with the pencil drafting part. So I want to have the lion patience as a foreground element and part of the library building on the left side um, as the uh, middle ground area, just lay laying out these columns and domes and the right wing of the library building foliage as I always needed for my urban sketches and uh, buildings there across the street. Okay, so now I'm ready to start drawing my foreground element, which is the, uh, the beautiful, elegant lion patience. So starting with the head and a bit of the manes on the left side, and then this part is easier because it's just the uh, rectangular shape of the book. Starting to add the eyes, trying to get the facial expression showing a sense of wisdom and calmness or patience. And then extending to my lines to the back and the, the hind leg of the lion, uh, the hind paw, adding some skin folds for the back. Okay, and now I'm ready to draw the platform the lion is laying on, which is kind of like a mini staircase. Um, into different vertical sections and then writing down the pretty important words on the book cover protect the freedom to read and then adding a bit of accentuation around the lion's uh, muscle areas and the contour outline of the face a bit more skin folds showing muscles and that's it now moving on to the slanting line uh, these lines are going down into a vanishing point somewhere close to the right edge of my page. And these lines are going down because they are above the eye level. Yet yeah, all of these lines, they are pretty much parallel to one another, all going down towards the vanishing point, somewhere pretty close to the right edge of my paper. Okay, and uh, of course they are above my eye level. So now I'm starting to add some inner details for this section of the building, these uh, floating statues. So there are six statues on top of the library building here. Um, each of them represents uh, history, Romans, religion, poetry, drama, and philosophy. So this is how I use pretty simple contour outlines to simplify these figures. And these figures, they're looking shorter as they're moving towards the right side of the building because of the idea of foreshortening in terms of perspective. Okay, and now just moving down to the next area without adding way too much um, details for the figures, just a very um, simple suggestion. Okay, now moving on to these brackets hanging around the eave area. And these tabs, actually brackets, are getting smaller and smaller going towards the right because of the idea of foreshortening. Things in the distance, they get a little squished, smaller and narrower. Okay, so this, this uh, higher section of the building and some more of these little um, textures, very common on classical buildings. Okay, so once the details are filled for this section, I'm moving down to the next part. These two lines are still going down because they are still above my eye level. And then starting to draw this uh, very fancy floral area of the column, actually the pillar, you can call this uh, a pillar. And the base of the pillar is actually two rectangular prisms on top of each other. And then getting half of the arch in over here for the very left side of my image and and the inner part of the arch, giving it um, a sense of thickness and um, simplifying these designs using uh, sh simple shapes like rectangles and these parallel lines. Okay, now going back to the main area of my sketch, keep drawing another crown for the top of the pillar. And then the, uh, the dark shaded areas in between these two pillars, I just use solid brown ink to get a sense of shaded area in and another lovely floral crown for the pillar here and another one. These two pillars are looking a little narrower compared to these two 
on the on the left side because、um, they are a little bit more far away. Adding textures for these pillars using loose and broken segments of vertical lines. And just quickly writing down the letters,、uh, the New York Public Library. Yeah, so this library is one of the greatest libraries in the world and the largest library in the、uh, United States. And it was it's established in、um, 1895. And this、uh, library first opened sometime in 1911. And keep drawing this、uh, central dome area, actually the the arch, and then also drawing the inside, give a sense of three dimensionality for the arch. Just keeping these inner details pretty simple into、uh, very simplified shapes. And then there is another, a dome in there, going to another area. Those rectangles. On the、uh, dome area, they're actually、uh, looking a little curved because they're landing on the curved surface, and some more little floating carved florals for this other arch over here. I think we can only appreciate the beauty of architectures if we just draw them, really slowing down and、uh, look at their details, looking at one、uh, large, medium, and small shape at a time. Uh, really get into depths, you know, into connection with the architecture. Okay, so now finally I get to draw some trees on the right side of this、uh, scenery. When I'm doing urban sketching, I always love to include foliage, like trees or bushes, and as, as well as adding some people, which are really important to give a sense of proportion. Making the lion statue and the building behind、uh, looking grander with these small people walking on the bottom. Um, also, including some people、uh, taking photos, looking at the building. Now, I'm drawing these umbrellas of the、uh, vendors in between the trees. So, one of the、uh, interesting things about New York City is that we can always see a lot of vendors selling hot dogs, sandwiches, and fruits. There are just numerous of these vendors、uh, all around downtown New York City. And、um, okay, now I'm just adding. Very loosely of the tree's canopy, using these squiggly lines for the、uh, inside part, keeping the shape of the canopy、uh, really round and fluffy. Now I'm simplifying the lion fortitude over here, which is just a bare outline, giving a sense that is、uh, more in the far distance. And then drawing a few more people around it. Again, those people are a little smaller because they're even more far away.、Uh, a few more branches and twigs. For these trees surrounding the library, which looks really nice and adds a sense of organic feel to this、um, human-made urban landscape. Okay, so that's it for these the two twin trees or buddy trees. Now I am drawing the、uh, buildings on the other side of the street, just simplifying them into these、um, stacks of rectangular prisms, as you can see, as well as cubes. Buildings are as I always see them as just gigantic building blocks, and these windows are just simply little square blocks. And I'm also simplifying these、uh, window clusters by just drawing、um, about half of them and leaving a lot of blank areas for the viewers to imagine and to create a sense of um, um, whimsical kind of feel. And that's very much all the details. Just adding some of these、um, side suggestions of the, the street, the buildings down there. Here I am sketching. This is actually a pretty quiet spot right outside the library, close to the、uh, flower bed. And here I am putting the、uh, sketchbook on top of、um, marble fence. And here I am putting my tripod、uh, right in front of me. And sketching in one of the busiest cities in the world is a great way to train our focus. Just focusing on the seeing and creative process without、um, getting distracted by all the noises and people. Okay, so now、I、just started painting a、uh, pretty simple cerulean blue gradients、uh, using wet onto wet,、uh, a lighter cerulean blue diluted with a lot of water. For the higher part,、um, I use a more concentrated cerulean blue to get it done. Okay, and now I am just doing the、um, kind of like the underpainting 
for the illumination of sunshine on all of these buildings. So out of these buildings are concrete or marbled uh, surfaces. So when the sunshine are hitting these gray areas, they are uh, turning into a mellow yellow kind of tone. Now I'm adding the, uh, the first colors for the foliage, which is a mix of um, lemon yellow, yellow ochre, and a little bit of lime green. So when painting trees, don't worry too much about traces of brush marks. It's actually good for giving texture of leaves. And now I'm doing wet onto wet. So this is a mix of viridian green and a little bit of yellow ochre, just for the bottom half of the tree's canopy. And then kind of spreading it to the middle and higher part of these uh, two buddy trees. The sun, I believe right now is late in the morning and it's hitting um, almost directly onto these trees. Mm, so the uh, light and shaded areas are a little tricky. So just kind of following what I see, the middle part of these two trees are actually pretty illuminated by the sunshine. Uh, the higher and the bottom part is actually more shaded. So pretty interesting. And then using a dilated yellow ochre to paint these bows and branches. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a break from these trees and just uh, grabbing yellow ochre and a little bit of um, raw umber. So mixing these two colors together and dilute it with a lot of water to paint uh, the surface of the marble building exterior, as well as the, uh, the lion statue. So the color or the tone of marble surfaces is of a warmer uh, kind of brownish gray on a bright sunny day. So that's the color that I perceive. So the colors on the surface of black gray and white objects are always tricky because um, it's, they're very always unstable depending on the lighting condition. Okay, now it's time to do some shading. So I just mixed burnt sienna with a little bit of cobalt blue. As you can see, inside the domes is a, obviously a really dense shaded area. Um, yeah, so again, burnt sienna mixed with um, cobalt blue for the inside of these arches. Yeah, so this step, it gives a really strong sense of depth for these domes inside the arches, yeah, as well as the, uh, the eave areas for the higher part of the building. And um, really simply shading these statues just on their left side because the sun was on the right. And um, shading the lion, uh, mostly on the bottom, using thin brush strokes to get the fold of muscles and skin done. So when we're painting white, gray, or black objects, I think it's very important to uh, have different kinds of grays. Um, as you can see in this sketch, I used um, bluish grays uh, and brownish grays and even uh, violet, purplish kind of grays, uh, very subtle kinds of grays rather than just mixing water into black. And now I'm adding a little bit of tints of brown for the lion statues, the base area, to give the marbled surface a sense of age. All right, so I'm just gonna shade um, the library building very moderately with controlled diluted bluish grays, and that's very much it. And uh, just shade the, uh, the trees, boles, and trunks with a darker sepia. And for these buildings on the other side of the street, I'm just gonna use muted brown and also cobalt blue mixed into the brown. Yeah, the shadows landing on these buildings are actually very interesting, a little dramatic. And same for these windows. Again, I use blue and purplish grays to shade those buildings, mostly shadows. And then using vibrant red and blues for the umbrellas, painting these people's outfits freely with um, colors from my memory or just uh, random colors of vibrancy. And so tree canopies, they are in a 3D shape of uh, spheres. So usually the bottom half has the uh, darkest green shades and uh, yeah, the trunks and branches, final polish, final little bit of shaded areas and shadows for these buildings. That's it. Here's a look of my finished sketch. This one took me one hour and 30 minutes to draw because there are actually a lot of uh, renderings to do for the lion statue as well as the library building behind. Now I'm inside. 
And now I feel like I just went back in time to about hundreds of years ago. And I just love these little models of the lion statues. Can I help you? Yeah, can I please have a stamp right over here? I don't know, your picture's so pretty. What is this? Uh, it's just a sketch outside the library. You did that? Yeah. It's very good. Uh, I hate to stamp it though. Where do you oh. want it? You tell me, where do you want it? Yeah, let's have a look. Good. It must be so good to be studying and reading in one of these reading rooms at the library here and the hallway is as busy as it can get. Beautiful murals on the walls and um, here I am walking down to the uh, Grand Central Station and um, yeah just love the, the bridge and the little restaurant under the bridge there. Here I am inside the hallway of the Grand Central train station. I love these zodiacs uh, painted on the ceiling. Beautiful work. And in the afternoon, after lunch, my next stop is the, uh, the MoMA Art Museum. And it's always fun to walk around these downtown streets. Here I've got my ticket. And uh, ooh, looking at uh, Matisse's, Picasso's work, as well as Paul Cezanne's and uh, Vincent Van Gogh's beautiful and inspirational landscapes, the starry night and admiring Claude Monet's grandiose water lilies for the first time in life. Wow. So looking at these beautiful artworks, it inspires us to, to see that there's so many kinds of greens, blues, and purples that we could mix and use based on our sensations um, and deep observations of the world around us. And most importantly, to identify our true selves. So stay tuned for my next video that I'll be sketching on top of the uh, Empire State Building of the uh, gorgeous sunset sky outside the uh, 86th floor window. Have a great day everyone. Bye.